All right, so last time when we left this build of Budgie, we had some issues. One of the issues that I had is that these logout buttons weren't working. You guys didn't see that. I cut the video out and I'm like, it's not working. Now, this is resolved. This could have been resolved by the fact that I found that my uh, build here was only running one core instead of the four I thought it was. And uh, I'm not sure if a system update or if fixing the cores fixed that. But anyway, we went ahead and got that fixed. <laughs> um, the next thing is, if you remember, we left it uh, pretty ugly. I was locked into the high contrast theme with the high color icon pack. Um, and oh wait, uh, I think I was left with this as my design and I couldn't move off of this color theme. And so what I wanted to do here um, is I wanted to walk you through the steps that we took to uh, make these steps happen. I was going to record them in sequence, but there were a few things I needed to stop and uh, retool. The first and foremost, I could not find any of the budgie themes in the actual repositories. Although after a little bit of probing and prodding, I did find a few things that were in there and there may very well be more. It's just, they're not well documented. I could not find absolutely anything looking for budgie uh, widget themes or anything like that. And uh, you might know off the top of your head, but I just don't use budgie on an, enough of a regular basis to know exactly what they are. Now, I was actually able to find a place to download Arc Dark, so we went ahead and did that. That worked out pretty well. I also found uh, Sugar. Sugar Art is in the repositories, and this is what this one looks like. Um, nothing that I would really want to use as my regular desktop, so we'll just go back to Arc for there. As far as icons, we have Sugar icons. Pop icons are in the Arch repositories. Elementary icons are in the pop repositories. So we have some icons there. Of course, any icon packs you could download and put in your uh, .icons folder in your home directory and do that. We do have elementary pop and sugar cursors. Um, let's go ahead and not worry about those. So we went ahead and uh, added these in. The other factor that we did is I got the GNOME Software Center. Uh, actually working with the repositories now and this is working with the arch repositories and with flat packs so we can now come over here and we can if we want enable or disable our automatic updates and our automatic update notifications so you can go ahead and turn those off if you like them off turn them on if you like them on but now we can use the GNOME software store as a GUI to install things from the Arch repository. So that is pretty much what I've done. I also put the power strip at the bottom. I usually put the power strip at the bottom of Budgie and take this out. Um, that's kind of where I prefer it. Let's go ahead and look at Raven and let's see bottom panels. I'm going to take the let's see uh, there's the menu icon list. There's your system tray, notifications, status indicator, um, user indicator, and Raven trigger. Is the status indicator the... I can't remember which one is the actual user login, logout. I think that's the user indicator. I've never been a huge fan of that one, so I'll go ahead and remove that, that icon from it. I just use this. Um, it's kind of where I, I prefer it. There should be a power button though too. There's lock. And here's your logout options. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll have to put the user applet back on. I used to have a power button on there as well. Like I said, I haven't used Budgie a whole lot. Um, but we'll go ahead and uh, walk you through the steps that I took to make these things happen here. So I created the document here and the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to do gnome themes extras. This is not actually adding anything into our theming. I the indications suggested it might work, but uh, that didn't seem to actually do anything. The gnome software package kit plugin. Uh, this is what was required to get your gnome software store working with the um, 
Arch repositories. Arch Linux AppStream data is required for that, but this automatically installs that. Budgie Desktop View is the application that gives you your desktops on uh, desktop icons, which is something I like. I know some people like it, some people don't. I uh, can't do a lot with them, but hey, at least uh, they're there. You can work with them. It's not really a good solution, uh, but it's a solution. Now, if you wanted to install Pomac, I actually have a video and a tutorial on how to do that. I did not bother with that in this case because we already have the GNOME software store. Now, if I wanted to do that, there is an extra step in this build because when we did our install, I remember we had the option to uh, set up user groups, and I said, well, we'll go ahead and leave the user group out of the sudo group. We can just drop into sudo in order to do anything, and we left it at that. Well, if you do want to install um, the Archuse repository, yay, or Pomac in this case via the AUR, you actually do need to make sure that your main user is in the sudo group. So I didn't walk through the steps on that, but um, I wanted to go ahead and just leave you guys with, with what we're at. Now, how I got all these guys running, of course, without our main user in the sudo group, if you try and do like a sudo pacman syu, it's going to tell you that you're not in the sudos file. We could do this by adding our user to the sudo group. What I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to drop to the super user by doing su enter my super secret password and now we can check for any updates that are available <clears throat> so you can see we're checking now updates let's see if anything is available and uh okay good nothing to do might say wow now i've never seen that thing with arch yeah i just ran updates like five minutes ago so whatever so anyway uh what i did to find the icons and such i'm just going to do a pac-man and uh capital s lowercase s well, it does everything. Let's go ahead and do a capital S, lowercase s. Let's search for icons, for example. Do this, and uh, this is going to give you a list of all the icons available. You can see I have the elementary icon theme installed. I have the GNOME uh, icon themes installed. The Node.js material design icon themes installed. Now, some of these didn't actually show up in the list. The sugar artwork did show up in the list. Uh, Pop OS is showing up in the list. That's here somewhere. Um, so I did not do the oxygen icons. Um, so there's uh, options inside of here. Of course, you can go to any place online. Let's go to just a, uh, an online repository of icons. You can download any individual icons and um, go with where you are. Let's do Linux and we'll just do GNOME icons. Um, just because um, uh, Budgie is uh, is GNOME. So GNOME-Look, this is a good place where you can get icon themes. So you can do shiny icons, a variety of different things. You can just go ahead and download these. And they're going to show you how basically what you're going to do is you're going to download them and drop them into your, um, your icons folders. So here's Breeze, Chameleon Dark, Rounded. Here's files. So if I'm going to go ahead and download these guys, we're just going to go ahead and download them. New folder dot icons. And then if they're compatible with your theme, they'll show up. I have found that you'll find times when icons simply don't show up. Mm, maybe they will. Maybe we, they won't. Let's go ahead and have a look. Shiny dark icons. There we are. Now the question is, uh, let's close the terminal that way. You shouldn't close the terminal that way, but there we are. Now we have some good shiny dark icons on, on our list. It looks like... Uh, yeah. There we are. So that's how you can go ahead and change your icons. So this is the steps that you do to walk through. Uh, sometimes it's just checking your documentation. Um, sometimes it's easier. Sometimes it's harder. I say that a, 
a desktop like Budgie is a little bit harder to get things set up because it's not quite as well documented as something like GNOME or Cinnamon or whatever else. So we do have options, though, you can work with. And um, you can go ahead and find all the things that you need by doing a little bit of searching and just remembering, you know, you can override icon themes and theme files with dot themes, dot icons in your home directory. Um, just doing a generic search for Arch, um, GNOME software store repositories will show you that you need to install the individual packages for, for that. So these are the kind of the things that, that we need to keep in mind is, um, just because you don't have a perfect shiny theme out of the box doesn't mean you're not going to have a good user experience because I could come in here. It's very bare minimum and then I can set up my system any way that I would like my system set up. Now I've done entire videos about working with Budgie, setting everything up and, and things like that. So we're not going to uh, spend a ton of time here working on that. I just wanted to show you guys how you can start from the um, just a boring generic arch and install whatever desktop environment you want and then it's not as easy but it's certainly not difficult to go through and figure out how to get the theming and all the setups um how'd everything else work well everything else does seem to work just fine i'm still not used to the fact that the desktop is a single click yet um Everything from uh, just looking at, at network locations, uh, SMB shares were working. Well, they were working earlier. There they are. Okay, so here's my Raspberry Pi um, uh, network shares, and uh, they were working pretty well. Right now, the system's running a little slower than it was, probably because I'm recording and having a bunch of other things go on. But you can see right here, this is actually everything inside of there. So double-clicking on the open share. This is my anonymous um, SMB share. Everything else is password protected. And this is going to allow us to go on into my server and share any files back and forth. So if I wanted to go ahead and drop any files from this computer over there or drop, grab any stuff from here over to here, we can go ahead and uh, do that just with simple dragging and dropping. I didn't have to configure anything that worked uh, right out of the box. So here is uh, what we'll call our, our final build of our Arch Budgie. And uh, with that, let me know any thoughts you have in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.